going to go ahead and hit the content warning now. Because this might be triggering to the trans community. I'm, I apologize, but I promise I've got, I've got some silver linings here. Leah Thomas apparently took first place in a swimming competition. This is some, this is a satire liberal site. Saying congrats to Emma Wyant on your victory. If the feminist won't stand up for you, I will. Transgender swimmer Leah Thomas gets booed on the podium after winning the NCAA Women's Championship race. Runner-up Emma Wyant receives loud cheers. Now the the video now. Did they announce Leah first, or are they going? up the podium here okay so they went up the podium so that was it was a reaction to Leah Thomas, which wasn't wasn't that bad to be honest with you. It was a smattering of assholes. This is apparently the dad of one of the the swimmers competing against Leah. Thinks that he's standing up for the integrity of women's sports. Felipe Delgado is one of the only parents willing to go on the record and share how he feels about a about Leah Thomas, a female, competing against his daughter. We're reading from the Daily Wire right now. So I might change a few words just to be politically correct, if you will. So can you tell us a little bit how you feel about your daughter swimming against a biological male in this all-women's race? You know... It's, it's kind of mixed emotions, right? Because uh, you have to remember, Leah Thomas is a woman group. And well, I want to state perfectly clear. Leah Thomas is a woman. Which is why she's competing in the women's division. Because trans women are women. Period. There is, you have to see the human side of it. Um, she's also not the gatekeeper. So she's not here breaking rules. She's also she's she's here playing within the rules, and those are the rules. So is Leah. Uh, by the NCAA. That's that's another point I want to make. The NCAA has a stringent testing policy on testosterone and other metrics to ensure the fairness that he is complaining about. And had uh, they established rules that prohibited her from being here, uh, she wouldn't be here. So. Um, I think that everything that's surrounding this championship, unfortunately, um, we're not seeing all of the positivity that's taking place at these at, at these uh, at this tournament. And you know, we're focusing on things that are dividing us. We're focusing on things that are unfortunately. Yes, I think you, dude, giving an interview to the Daily Wire, talking about your grievances with the trans community, are focusing on things that divide us. Yes negative and we have to once the speech concludes we have to pull up a chair have a decent conversation and figure out how to fix this because it does have to be fixed so you think that we shouldn't be putting responsibility on leah thomas it should be on the people that allowed leah thomas to swim in the women's races i think more of the responsibility has to be put on the organization that is allowing this to divide us and to focus on things that we should you're the one dividing us focusing on the positive all of the fantastic accomplishments that are, that are taking place here at this at this meet and unfortunately that's not what's going on so we're missing out to be honest with you we're missing out in dialogue on some such great things but um you know does leah thomas have fault you know i i have to sit back and, and reflect on that just because um, no she's not believer that there is a gatekeeper and when that gatekeeper allows somebody to come in who potentially uh shouldn't be invited to the party um I think ultimately the, the front of the blame, if there is blame to be had, would fall on that person. 
Didn't be invited to the party. What an asshole. So his daughter will be swimming against Leah Thomas in the 100 freestyle, which I believe Leah lost. I don't, I don't know the different, I don't know the measurements. She won the 500, I think. So she would have lost the 100. So his daughter is competing against somebody who isn't going to win this event. He's upset that she has an unfair advantage in an event that she didn't win. We're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that here in a second as well. So can you tell us a little bit how you feel about your daughter swimming against a biological male in this all women's race? You know, it's it's kind of mixed emotions, right? Because uh, you have to remember, Leah Thomas is a human being, and there is you have to see the human side of it. Um, oh, this is the same video we just watched, wasn't? It? You know, I've given my daughter and I had a conversation today, and tomorrow is her last event. Tomorrow's the last day of the her last individual event. And my, um, my conversation with her as, as a coach, I coached her for two years prior to the Olympic Games, um, is to go out there and kick some ass. And no matter who she's got on either side of her, uh, go out there and try her best and leave with your head held high. Because just being here is a massive accomplishment. Um, but we're not here to participate. Uh, we're here to get a second swim and that's, you know, that's what the conversation revolved around, is getting a second swim, getting the top 16, if not top eight. And, and going from there. Is this hard for her? It is, you know, it, it's, and, I, and I don't think it's unique to her. I think it's hard for a lot of the kids who are here who have mixed emotions. Again, you want to be happy, but at the same time, something tells you that what's going on is not right. So the emotions are mixed, and when these kids should be focusing on nothing more than a swim meet that they've been preparing for. I feel like the kids uh, are focusing on the months. swim meet, and it's um, it's all the culture war bullshit. You're talking to the Daily Wire. Just because we couldn't get it right, uh, it's just unfair to these kids. And the, tw the past 24 months haven't been unfair. You know, we just keep piling it on, right? So, um, again, this should be a, a time to celebrate. We're divided. There's arguments. There's vitriol. There's hate. And it shouldn't be like that because sports is the unifier and it should be something that we celebrate. Also, sports don't fucking matter, by the way. Like, I know, like, people people take issue with, like, and they'll be like, oh, it teaches blah, 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 teamwork and, and, and hard work and blah, 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 and work ethic and you, 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 what, the, what the fuck ever. But, like, who wins and loses doesn't matter. Does not matter. So now, before I correct the bullshit, let's hear a little more bullshit. Let's hear Fox News interview some turfs. I don't care what surgeries they have. I don't care what they inject into their bloodstream. They so these are supposedly liberal feminists. I was historically liberal. I mean, I'm a walk away Democrat. I am a lifelong a walk away Democrat, Democrat who ultimately <laughs> homeless. Um, it really started maybe right before Biden, but um, ultimately with the whole Biden election, I began to feel more and more disenfranchised from Democrats. I would say I'm politically homeless now because I don't think the Democrats care about women and girls. The Democrats are not even acknowledging women as a sex class now. Now men what? babies. Men need abortion. It's no longer even a women's issue. What's your gender? <laughs> when Biden came out in the first days of his presidency with his executive order, which replaced the category of sex at the federal level with the category of gender identity, um, I, I, it was just... It was a slap. It was the too much for you to handle. Moment, I, I really haven't known how to categorize myself um, politically. I always voted as a liberal. So I, from 18 to like 39, 38, I, I registered Republican in 2020 after two politicians actually told me they did not want my vote because of my stance on the rights for women and girls. That term feminism has become so muddied and so uh, mishmash, much like the term Democrat has become so muddied and mishmash it, it's practically lost all meaning they w wanted to put men in yep reactionary 
men on sports teams in my daughter's school. And so, yeah, that's why I decided I cannot be a part of this party anymore. That yes, they want a man. They want they want me to go play in your daughter's sports team. The developmental process can't be reduced to a fixed identity. I do work that supports women and girls' right to um, sex-based provisions like um, single-sex spaces, single-sex sports, um, single-sex prisons, single-sex uh, rape crisis shelters. That's why I had to switch parties, even though I don't necessarily regree- agree with a lot Republicans do as well. I, I have a radical... Fe- Fucking Republicans are batshit crazy. They're fascists. I don't like to identify myself as anything. Right. Kids are being taught that they have to trust what the strange man tells them about, about his identity. No, no, no. Kids are being taught that they have to trust what the strange man tells What the fuck are you saying? I know a lot of historically liberal people, uh, especially parents, who have felt like they needed to walk away from the Democratic Party. And I I don't know who they're going to be voting for. And that's that's the the most insane. Somebody told me today, like, well, Trump will win in 2024. And I'm like, he lost in a historic landslide. And you people are still, still acting like... Still embarrassment. You lost spectacularly. How? How in the fuck? Learn to feel embarrassment, please. Oh, God. This was published in the Daily Wire, gloating about it. Gloating about it. When it completely disproves. They hate this woman so much that they're going to gloat about it. And it disproves their argument. Multiple women beat Leah Thomas in women's 200 freestyle. Yes, multiple women multiple women beat another woman in the women's freestyle. That's not an absurd thing to happen. Thomas tied for fifth with Riley Gaines of the University of Kentucky with a time of 1.43.40. This is in the Daily Wire. They are reporting that the, the, the super athlete that apparently has so much of an advantage over other females, she needs to be kept out from the sport, actually finished tied for fifth. Make it make sense to me. Swimmer Leah Thomas, who identifies as a who identifies who is a woman, tied for fifth place in the women's 200-yard freestyle race Friday evening. Stanford junior Taylor Ruck finished the race with a time of 141.12. So. Clearly, she doesn't have this crazy unfair advantage. I've got some other numbers that are going to show you that Leah Thomas doesn't have this crazy unfair advantage. Now, I just copied this from a guy's Facebook post. I didn't want to credit him because I don't want to, I don't want to, like, it was just a guy's fucking post. He was just, you know, riffing. I don't want to credit him because I don't want any trolls going after him. And it's just some guy's post. And I asked him if he had a source, like if this is from a story. But apparently he just looked all this shit up. I looked up the names and the times, and they are correct. So if we need to verify anything else in this this little factoid here, please let me know. We will verify it. But I looked up all the the other names that uh, he is comparing Leah Thomas with. Leah Thomas won one NCAA Finals event, the 500-yard women's freestyle, with a 4:33-24 finish. A senior, meaning this is the last NCAA event she'll ever win, she finished eighth overall. The seven swimmers ahead of her were all cis women. Eighth overall, the seven swimmers ahead of her, all cis women. They're making a big deal about her winning that one event. Last year's winner of the 500-yard uh, freestyle was Paige Madden 
with a 4.33.61 finish, a difference of a half of a second. The time would have been good enough for first this year, too. So Paige Madden would have won the event by a half a second. You swapped Madden in for Thomas. Have you heard of Paige Madden, or do you only care about NCAA women's freestyle swimming now that a trans athlete has had modest success? The NCAA women's record for this event was set by Katie Ledecky of Stanford, a very famous and very cisgender multiple Olympic gold medalist with a time of 424 and six uh, second and six tenths of a second. Nine seconds faster than Leah Thomas's time this year. The, the, uh, uh, here in about 20 minutes, Porg, probably. If I don't get distracted again. Uh, um, so that was nine seconds. The record is nine seconds faster than Leah Thomas's time this year. So there you have it. There, there's the breakdown of some of the times. There's also this going around, which shows that Leah's best pre-transition 500 meter time. I, I think that's 500 yards. Might be somebody that's out of the country. They assume that it's meters. Uh, Leah's best pre-transition 500 yard time was 4:18.72. Leah Thomas's current 500 yard time is 4:34:06. So transitioning actually added on 16 seconds to her time. The female record is 4:24:06. The male record is 4.06.32. So she was 10 seconds behind the male record pre-transition. She was 10 seconds behind the male record pre-transition. She's 10 seconds behind the female record post-transition. So I I don't see the issue with Leah Thomas. Congratulations to her for winning. And you know, like I'm not the only one giving her congratulations. An Olympic silver medalist who lost to Leah Thomas at NCAA championships said she's proud to support trans athletes. While the Daily Wire was busy interviewing that dad and the the uh, and the turfs were on Fox. University of Pennsylvania swimmer and newly anointed national champion Leah Thomas has found herself at the center of America's debate over transgender athletes' participation in women's sports. One notable voice in the chorus of individuals supporting Thomas and other trans athletes belongs to Texas Longhorns freshman Erica Sullivan, who touched the wall after the controversial swimmer in Thursday night's final. One day after finishing third behind Thomas and Virginia Cavaliers star Emma Wayant, Sullivan penned an op-ed for Newsweek in which she explained why I'm proud to support trans athletes like Leah Thomas. All athletes, including transgender athletes, deserve to be respected and included exactly as we are, Sullivan wrote. Throughout my life, swimming has enabled me to learn so much, both in and out of the pool, and transgender athletes should not be excluded from this opportunity. Agreed. Concerns about perceived fairness have no no place in this. Fairness is allowing transgender people to compete in sports. Sullivan, who stood on the 1,500-meter freestyle podium. Okay, maybe it was meter. I don't know anything about sports, yards, meters. Somebody fucked up. (laughs) So Sullivan, who stood on the 1,500-meter freestyle podium alongside swimming icon Katie Ledecky at the Tokyo Olympics, noted that as a member of the LGBTQ plus community herself, feel incredibly grateful that coming out as gay never kept me from being able to participate in the sport I love. (laughs) 
Congratulations, Leah Thomas. I hate that, the, that there is so much hate being direct, hate and vitriol directed towards you. I've seen so many fucking memes. I've seen this picture alongside of there's a, a South Park episode where like they're mocking the Macho Man, like competing in women's sports or something, which is really disappointing for South Park. They've been so good about correcting the bullshit of their past, and like they had an episode, the sissy, that was praised by uh, LGBTQ groups for its handling of, of the trans topic. So I, I was really disappointed in the uh, strong strong woman, yes, principal strong vice principal strong woman or whatever the fuck it was storyline. It was really stupid. It wasn't funny, and they didn't have they didn't really have a point to make. But I've seen I've seen pictures from that episode transposed with this podium. I wish I could go up and give you a hug, girl. But congratulations to second and third and all the rest of them. Fuck sports. I don't give a shit. But if it makes you guys happy. Be the hell out of it. 